Earth, Death, Infinity. Good afternoon and welcome to the Your Health Television Program here on AMPS Cable Channel 24 and on the internet at www.ampmedia.org. Join our rotating host and their informative guest live every Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock. The purpose of the Your Health Television Program is to help get, make, and keep listeners and viewers like you healthy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on with the program. Hello and welcome to the Your Health Television Program hosted by the Monterey County Health Department. I'm Emily Shelto, your host today and just about every third Monday of each month. Did you know that most households in the United States have at least one pet? Yep, according to the 2011-12 American Pet Products Association National Pet Owner Survey, 62% of U.S. households own a pet. That equates to approximately 73 million pets, and a majority of which are cats and dogs. No surprise there. But isn't that a ton of animals to look after and care for? Luckily for us and our furry friends, our furry family members here in Monterey County, we have the support of the dedicated staff at the Monterey County Health Department Animal Services Division. Animal Services is responsible for protecting, promoting, and enhancing the health, safety, and quality of life for companion animals and people within Monterey County. They maintain a shelter for stray animals and work tirelessly with the community to return animals to their owners or adopt animals into new homes. They provide a host of low-cost services, including vaccinations, microchipping, and so much more. Today, we're going to hear from two Monterey County Animal Services staff members who will provide all the info you'll need to keep you and your pet healthy, happy, and close to home. With that, I'd like to welcome my first guest to the program. Sitting across from me now is Ms. Kate Davis-Hill, Monterey County Animal Services Operations Manager. Welcome, Kate, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Indeed. So Kate, let's start with the basics. What is the mission and goals of Animal Services? Well, as you said, that our main mission is to protect, promote, and enhance the health, safety, and quality of life for companion animals and people within Monterey County. How we do that is we like to increase animal and public safety, improve animal welfare, eliminate euthanasia of adoptable domestic animals, increase the number of animals returned to owners, reduce the number of animal, unaltered animals in the community, successfully mediate and resolve complaints, and increase responsible pet ownership. So that's a quite a list of, um, of tasks. You guys are pretty busy yeah. over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are, the, what are the main programs of animal services? Like how do those, how do those goals get carried out? So um, in animal services, we have pretty much two main divisions where we have animal shelter services, which are mainly on facility services, and then we have field services. So within the animal shelter, we're looking at um, increasing owner redemption of stray animals, uh, adoptions. We do quarantines for animals that have bitten in the community to make sure that they don't have rabies. We help license with licensing, and we maintain lost and found records. With regards to field services, we help pick up stray animals, injured pets in the field. We do rabies control, which as part of our quarantine procedure uh, on site, we also go out and investigate bite complaints. Uh, we pick up wildlife that may be spreading rabies around either to our pets or potentially to other um, people. We do citizens complaints and we also provide permits for things such as breeding and boarding kennels. Okay, okay. so. Services on site at the shelter and then field services mm -hmm. and when you're doing um, Well, I guess both of those are both of those kind of categories. What areas? Um, do do animal services provide those services for? Um, well, we look at mainly work in unincorporated Monterey County, but we also work as well in Carmel Greenfield and uh, Sand City Okay. So we, while we are out in the rural areas, we also do have contracts with some of the cities around to provide different services um, that fall in those categories. Okay, so on a contractual basis, they don't have the um, capacity necessarily to do some of these things, so you step in and do that? Yeah, it depends. Um, we might have just a sheltering service. We might have a licensing that we do. Um, we might actually go out and do animal control. It really is dependent on what that city is needing from the county. So 
while we're we're definitely out in unincorporated and rural areas of Monterey County, we do have those contracts with the different cities. So okay, so this is like a some none all. It's all a cart. You can it, kinda yeah, it's kind of how how much you can afford what you have in terms of services. You know, some have already have an animal control in place and they just need a place to house the animals. Some don't have anything, so they need somebody to help with that facilitation. And in it all, we do have an oversight with the rabies control program because that is our main uh, mandate from the state. So, okay. So you're you got your hands in it in a lot of different areas of, yeah. of the county. Um, so who is uh, who's Focus? And am I saying that right? And how do they help animal services? Yeah. Focus is Friends of County Animal Services. Okay. They're a nonprofit that was set up to help kind of defray our costs to help us with programs through the through our facility. We have uh, several programs going with them right now. One is called Paws. It's pets with seniors, and uh, what they want to do is sometimes senior senior pets have a hard time getting adopted and you know seniors who are at home by themselves don't get a lot of interaction also kind of need companionship as well so we're hoping to facilitate a relationship that will give both of them what they need and so they help defray the costs on that um, we also have a spay and neuter program that's specific for both pit bulls and chihuahuas which are our high high number of animals through our facility so um, we refer those animals if the officers are out in the field and they see somebody with an unaltered pit bull or an unaltered chihuahua, they get them in contact with us and we get them set up to get spay and neutered, uh, microchip and, you know, get, get them up to date and uh, make sure that they're not out there creating more of an issue with, with sheltering and housing animals, so. And when you say unaltered, um not not spayed or neutered, so basically out there being able to reproduce. <laughs> okay. And Make more of them, and we don't want more. We want to see, you know, like I said, we, we do want to eliminate euthanasia of adoptable domestic animals, so reducing the pet population is one way we do that. Okay, and then those two uh, types of dogs in particular, because that's what you, there are a lot of here. Yeah, okay. we see a lot of those types of animals through, and so we're trying to help the people that tend to have um, maybe a more financial need to facilitate them towards p responsible pet ownership. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> how is animal services? And I've got I've been guilty of getting these two places or two <laughs> entities confused. But how is animal services different from Salinas Animal Shelter and the SPCA of Monterey County? Because they're all three different. They're three different entities, and we're actually right next door to Salinas Animal Shelter, so. We just get confused based on geography, but uh, we're obviously unincorporated areas of Monterey, as well as the cities we talked about with uh, Carmel, Greenfield, and Sand City. Salinas Animal Shelter is specific to the city of Salinas, so animal-related issues within the city limits uh, would talk to city of Salinas. SPCA is a nonprofit organization that has this, a lot of the same goals as both our organization and Salinas Animal Shelter but they're, like I said, nonprofit. They do contract with other cities, so they even have um, their hands on a lot of different pots in terms of what they provide for residents of Monterey County. So uh, we're, we're all kind of, it's really easy to get us confused because we do very, very similar things and we just serve either different people or um, just have a different way of serving dif the people, so. Okay, um, and is animal services no kill? So animal services is not no kill. Um, and describe what that means, just. Yeah, so there is kind of, there's a lot of different levels to no kill. A no kill facility, a lot of times what most people think of is what we would call limited dip, limited admission uh, shelter, which means that they will take appointments for animals to come in. Uh, they will do evaluations on the animals and decide if they can facilitate placing them into a new home. If somebody's looking to adopt their animal out, they can't keep them anymore. A lot of facilities that are not no kill, um, they are what we would call an open admission or have no limit on the animals that they will take in. So for example, with us that any stray animal has to come through and so automatically you have a space issue because it 
doesn't matter if there's no more kennels, you have to take in that next animal that comes through the door. And so uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different philosophy, but it, all of the organizations should work together in order to move towards uh, lowering the uh, euthanasia rate to increasing adoptability in animals. And um, that, that's kind of the premise that's really starting to take hold in, in the country nowadays. So. So, and animal services is, um, it, it is n not no-kill. It is, yeah. So, unfortunately, we do at this time have to euthanize animals um, due to a number of reasons. Um, the biggest thing that we like to do is to evaluate the animals based on both medical and behavioral health. Um, so, you're especially when you're dealing with a lot of stray animals or the ones that don't go through a no-kill program is that they tend to have um, fairly significant issues, whether it's physical or behavioral. So that automatically increases your euthanasia rate due to the fact that you have potentially dangerous animals, potentially very sick animals who are suffering. So that just is offset between a no-kill and an organization like Animal Services. And, and we've kind of, we, you and I have talked about this before at, at some length, and, and really, I, I really appreciate your philosophy, and I think that what you do and what Animal Service does is try to look at the big picture and keep, and keep everything in, in mind when making these decisions, because they're not easy, as mm -hmm. we've talked about, and it's really whatever is best for the whole piece. Yeah, and I think that that's the big, um, the big piece to it. A lot of, unfortunately, there's a lot of animal rights and an an a lot of animal welfare groups out there who are, can make a very detrimental picture of what euthanasia is. And the word euthanasia means good death. And I think that it's, it's not something that anybody actively seeks or pursues but they understand the issue of suffering, they understand the issue of we're working constantly towards responsible pet ownership, we're constantly fighting and striving to make that less and less of an option and really wanting to promote um, either return to owner, responsible pet ownership, retention within the home, um, spay and neuter, all those different things that are a part of that and unfortunately, you know, with the good comes the bad and you know, we look at so many animals and just my personal experience of seeing animals that they can have a warm place and they can have somebody who cares about them for that short period of time rather than dying this horrible awful death on the cold street when it's raining and there's no pain relief or anything like that and for me that that's a big deal I to be able to be proactive in reducing animal suffering. Yeah, and that's a huge difference too in how in how you leave the world. It's yeah, it, it, it's I think one of the things is is it is a highly emotional topic mm -hmm. because usually when we're talking about it, we think of our own pet. I think of my dog, and I can tell you that it would be an extremely traumatic situation to have to make that decision. But it is something in my own personal life that I know. I've made a decision as to how much I'm willing to let him go through. And I think that that's something that gets a little bit lost in today's society where we're willing to make them hang on to the bitter end. And unfortunately, pets can't sit there and say, I'm miserable. Yeah, <laughs> can I go now? <laughs> I hurt, you know, I just, just leave me alone. And, and you just, like I say, and in our, unfortunately in our business, we, we can see really happy stories of pets getting to go into new homes or coming in off the street and being in poor condition and they get the turnaround and they get a new chance. But you also see those conditions where you're like, I'm so glad that I can relieve pain and suffering in something rather than let it sit there and have the worst time dying. So thank, so thank you for kind of exploring that a little bit further. I think there is a lot of misinformation out there as to what euthanasia means exactly mm -hmm. and, and why it's done and, and, and what kind of you know, capacity it's done or w what the uh, criteria is. But mm -hmm. um, So let's talk about the flip side of that sort of. Who can adopt a pet and, and what's the process there? 
Well, I think anybody can adopt a pet. The big thing that we always want to see when people are looking to adopt a pet is that they've taken some time to really contemplate their situation in life. Um, you know, I, I pull up statistics because I'm a numbers person and they say the annual cost of a small dog, including food, veterinary care, and toys and license is around $420 a year. Oh. And you start going up in size for a medium dog that's 620 and for a large dog that can be any up to 600 or $780. So you take that out to a lifetime and because of advances in medical care, because of advances in the pet food industry, a lot of these animals can live for 15, 20, 25 years. So you multiply that times 15, 20, 25 years and that's a, that's a huge financial commitment that you're making as well as the fact that you become responsible for that life. And um, so, like I say, we really want to see somebody who's contemplated it, who understands the responsibility, but we don't, we want everybody to, who wants a pet to have a pet. So the biggest thing is, is that obviously come up, see us, we have an adoption, and uh, an adoption application. So you can kind of see the criteria we're looking at as we talk to adopters. and. Um, the other thing I always tell people is look online, research what kind of animal you want, you know, cat, dog, what breed. Some people are really happy with skinny pigs. <laughs> so, you know, there, there's no, today's society, there's no real barring of an animal that you would like to have, a domestic animal that you would like to have. So y the biggest thing is, is that being sure that you're prepared for it. Um, the other thing we always really uh, emphasize is you know, responsible pet ownership, which I know we get to talk about a little bit, but you know, adopting is great because we start you out pretty much at a, at a pretty even playing field rather than, you know, picking up a dog from the store or something like that where you have to pour in a lot of time and money initially for all the veterinary care that you get with an adopting, an adoption, so. So you provide, so once you adopt a, a, a pet from animal services or an animal from animal services, you, um, people are ready to hit the ground Pretty running much, for the most part. Pretty much running for the most part. So they have vaccinations, uh, deworming flea treatment. They get fixed, so they get spayed or neutered, so they're not making more of them. Um, they get a microchip, which helps us get them back home. A license, which you know helps also with identification as well as fulfilling the owner's requirement with the county to maintain a licensed pet. They also get some really neat free stuff. And so it, I think it's, you know, I've seen people do it both ways, and it seems very cost-effective to go through an adoption process. Yeah, it, and and so there's an application. Mm -hmm. um, do you come? Do you visit the home at all? We don't do home visits, but what we do look for on the application is some indicators as to how successful this animal will be. Number one is if you're renting, or you're living with somebody, or you're living with your parents. We need to have permission. Oh. Um, you do have to be 18 years old because you are signing a contract um, with, the, with the county for the adoption. We have some requirements for long term. And um, we just also want to make sure it's going to be a good fit. If we have a dog that doesn't really get along really good with dogs and we see in your application you have 10 other dogs, we're probably going to say, hey, we need to steer you in another way and find you something that's going to suit you better. So that's you know, the application really is kind of a... Fitting kind of process. Yeah, it's not necessarily you're approved or you're not approved. It's more how can we facilitate you in adoption, so... And a successful adoption. And it's successful so that the pet doesn't come back, that we can integrate the pet hopefully into your home long term. Wonderful. You guys really work with, with potential applicants and um, mm -hmm. that's great. I know that when I got my dog, he came, he came with most of the package deal, but there was still some other things and it was a little pricey. So, <laughs> um, you know what, that's about all the time we're going to have for this okay. segment. Kate, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I know you're coming back on the third segment, so um, I'm looking forward to that. If you would like any more information on anything you just heard from Monterey County Animal Services, um, visit them on the web at www.mtyhd.org slash pets. That's mtyhd.org slash pets, P-E-T-S. Right now we're going to take a short break, but don't go away. We'll be back in just a moment with more of the York.